everyone, welcome back to The Sugar Geek Show. Today, we're making one of our most popular recipes, a white velvet buttermilk cake. This recipe has been pinned over 100,000 times and is by far one of my most well-loved recipes on the blog. White velvet buttermilk cake is made with, surprise, surprise, buttermilk. Buttermilk has magical qualities when it comes to cake and makes it super moist, tender, and gives it just that little bit of something that's like, wow, this is so good. I have all of my ingredients measured out. You can get this recipe on my blog, sugargeekshow.com slash recipes. I'm just gonna go ahead and place my flour and my sugar, baking powder, a little bit of baking soda for that acidity, dash of salt to bring out that flavor. And I'm just gonna combine that using the paddle attachment. I'm gonna slowly start adding in some of my softened butter until my dry ingredients combine with the butter and make sort of like a coarse sand. And what this does is the butter is coating the flour and creating like a protective layer of delicious creamy butter so that our cake stays nice and tender. And we are using cake flour instead of regular flour because cake flour is made from the inside of the wheat kernel instead of the outside. So it's like a way more tender type of flour and is the type of cake that just kind of melts in your mouth. So while this is mixing, I'm gonna combine my egg whites, which have been sitting inside of a bowl of warm water to just get them up to room temperature. One of my tricks. And I'm gonna add about a half cup of my milk. And to my leftover milk, I'm gonna add my oil and my vanilla. Make sure you're using a really good, high quality vanilla. Vanilla is very expensive right now. But if you buy a high quality vanilla, it's going to taste really good without using a lot. I'm gonna add my oil and milk and vanilla mix to my dry ingredients. And I'm gonna bump this up to medium for two full minutes. So it's been two minutes. I know it sounds a little crazy to let your cake batter mix for two minutes, but this is something called the reverse creaming method. And because we've coated our flour in butter, basically making a short dough, the gluten in the flour does not develop as much as it normally would. And we're using cake flour, which is automatically less gluten -y than regular AP flour. So what this means is you're just not gonna get as much texture as you normally would if you were using plain flour. So you really have to make sure you mix for that two minutes so that you get that nice fluffy texture. It's really important. So you can see the batter is just really thick and white and fluffy right now. I'm gonna gently whisk up my egg whites and milk mixture. And now we're just gonna add in our remaining milk egg white mixture. Like three parts. Don't wanna ruin all that fluff. Just let it mix and combine for maybe five or 10 seconds before you add the next. And then at the very end, I'm gonna let it mix for 30 seconds or so, just to make sure that those egg whites have combined into the rest of my batter. I just give it a scrape, a little scrapey scrape, just to make sure that all of my batter is mixing in. And I can see that my batter is super smooth there's no separating, there's no curdling, and that's because I made sure that all of my ingredients, like my eggs, my butter, my milk, was all slightly warm. I can smell that kind of tangy buttermilk in there. It's gonna taste so delicious. I'm going to be greasing my pans with something called cake goop. Cake goop is just equal parts flour, oil, and vegetable shortening. And I always have some on hand for greasing my pans. It's gonna make this cake just slide right out. I'm gonna divide this cake between my cake pans. Fill it about three quarters of the way full. If you have any leftover cake batter, you can just save that for the next cake or bake a little extra one for yourself. Sometimes I'll weigh my cake pans to make sure that I have the same amount of batter in each pan so that they bake evenly. 
I'm gonna put these in the oven at 335 degrees Fahrenheit for about 28 minutes to start with, and I'll see where we're at, and then keep going until the toothpick comes out of the center clean, but they still haven't shrunk away from the sides. All right, mmm, our delicious cake is out of the oven. It looks amazing. It has shrunk down a little bit from the edges. That's totally normal. If you feel like your cakes are shrinking a lot, a little trick is right when it comes fresh out of the oven, give it a little tap and that helps the air release really quickly and you won't get some like lopsided shrinking that can sometimes happen. So we're gonna let this cool just for maybe 10 minutes or so inside the pan and then we're gonna flip it out. So our cake is cooled, the pan is still a little warm but cool to the touch. So I can just flip this out. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Even though this is a little bit warm, I'm just gonna cut the top off this so you can see the beautiful crumb on the inside. Hi, Avalon. Hi. Did you smell cake? Yes. You wanna take a bite? This is the cake dome part, your favorite. Ready? Mmm. Oh, that's so good. Mm. <laughs> so all that's left to do is let this cake cool down. Mm -hmm. I, I like to wrap mine up and throw them in the freezer for like an hour or so just to get them really nice and chilled quickly. Yes. <laughs> and then you can start putting buttercream on them and frosting your cake however way you like. Ermine buttercream is an old fashioned type of buttercream that's made with cooked flour and whipped butter. And it's actually very similar to Swiss meringue buttercream in that it's not very sweet, it's very smooth. And if you've ever had a ding dong, that filling on the inside, that's ermine buttercream. <laughs> Typically there's about a quarter inch of buttercream between each layer, but you could put as much or as little as you want. You measure that with your so I'm just putting on a thin layer of buttercream. This is called the crumb coat because it seals in all of the crumbs. So your final coat of buttercream is nice and smooth. I'm going to finish this cake with some of our buttercream and a 1M piping tip. I love doing simple rosettes for a cake because you don't really need any skills. And even if they're a little bit messy, it still looks really pretty. So that's everything you need to know about making white velvet buttermilk cake. This cake is so delicious, paired with the ermine buttercream, so good. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe. New videos every Tuesday. Thanks for watching.